Hello, I'm John Langley and I did the research for the Inside Out West program which you saw last night on Wick House and the charity which runs this in Brislington in Bristol. Now while the program covered quite a lot of, of different territory, it didn't really look into the background and the finances of Wick House and this is about well this is what I'm going to explain now and I'll take you through some slides and show you exactly kind of the, the behind the scenes stuff that wasn't aired on BBC One last night. Okay, so what started me off on this investigation? Well, I was in town one day and I just happened to be speaking to a, a former resident of Wick House at the time um, and another one came by and I just said, well, you know, what are you, what's your impression of Wick House? And he said, um, well, the director turns up in a Porsche and a Mercedes. And I thought about that for a minute and sort of scratched my head. And what struck me was that the director of a local charity for homeless people was driving around in perhaps, because I didn't know at that time, a Porsche and a Mercedes, while looking after homeless people with severe alcohol and drug problems and it, it just didn't seem to fit. I couldn't work it out how the, the two ends of the scale were so far apart and that's when the investigation began into Wick House. The charity uh, Bristol Sheltered Accommodation Limited which runs Wick House states very clearly that its aims and objectives are providing shelter and support to the homeless people of Bristol uh, and to offer a welcoming environment to heal and recover. We aim to end the cycle of homelessness by empowering, encouraging and promoting self-respect. We provide three nutritious meals a day and support around addictions and mental health. We have 24-hour supervision for over all of our residents. Now, being a charity, uh, Wick House, or the, ch the charity itself which runs it, Bristol uh, Sheltered Accommodation, has to have trustees and looking on the government website uh, about trustees it states that trustees have the overall legal responsibility for a charity the law describes charity trustees as the persons having the general control and management of the administration of a charity so i researched all the records of of wick house uh, through company's house and various other searches and the information that, that I, I managed to obtain uh, is pertinent to the years uh, 2015 to 2017. And the documentation uh, clearly states that the trustees are Sally Zamparelli, who resigned as a trustee on the 1st of September 2015, Ian MacDonald, who is the chair of the trustees, uh, Philip Clark, Marlene Risdale, uh, who resigned on the 11th of December 2015. Michelle Zamparelli, who resigned on the 1st of September 2015. Uh, Philip Barnett, Richard Cook, who was appointed on the 23rd of July 2015. Noel Holland, appointed on the 16th of July 2015. And Reginald Eisen, appointed on the 17th of July 2015 and Reginald Eisen appears to have uh, quite a, a management role in uh, in the hostel on a day-to-day -day basis uh, as far as we know to date he still does. Uh, the company secretary uh, who's also the chair of the trustees is Ian MacDonald and uh, the chief executive uh, is now uh, Sally Zamparelli. Okay, so here we have, uh, this is uh, Sally Zamparelli, courtesy of her Facebook. On investigating her, it was found out that she was the person who reported to me as driving uh, the Porsche and the Mercedes, um, the photographs of which uh, you can see here. I, can, I could understand perhaps the, uh, the chief exec of... Uh, an international charity like Oxfam or Red Cross even uh, having the benefit of uh, a very you know a very expensive Porsche so the question in my mind was 
how come chief executive of a homeless hostel could be driving around in a very expensive Porsche and have a nice luxury Mercedes parked outside of her Clifton residence. And that didn't seem to, to, to really fit unless, unless, of course, the charity was actually paying for the running or the, the leasing of those vehicles, which uh, it doesn't appear to be doing. So where was the money coming from? It was then we began to look into the finances of Sally Zamparelli, as I said, because, you know, this is about public scrutiny of uh, people who are running a charity and benefiting, the charity is benefiting from public funding. So it's really important that uh, the trustees and the chief executive are up for public scrutiny. So we did some research onto uh, Zamparelli and um, as you can see this is uh, Zamparelli docs pages one to three from the land registry. Now obviously what I've done here uh, is, is blurred out all of the relevant details. It seems apparent that uh, Mrs. Mrs. or Miss Zamparelli, um, well I would, I, would, I would hesitate to guess that she would be lucky if she owned the front door of that house because uh, there is uh, so much debt there. Uh, and so many charges on, on the property um, that I would almost hesitate to say that she qualified to live in Wick House herself. So, again, this brings into question um, how she could afford to run these two very expensive vehicles. Now, I'm sure um, there is a very good reason for the fact that she can and I'm not casting uh, any aspersions, I'm not making any accusations whatsoever, but it would be nice if she came forward and clarified um, exactly uh, how she could afford such expensive vehicles, um, given you know the state of uh, her finances and the fact that uh, she runs a charity for homeless people. As I say, I'm not suggesting for a minute there is anything, any impropriety, um, whatsoever but again because <coughs> the uh, the chief exec is open to public scrutiny um, and if if the you know if the the vehicles are being paid for uh, by Wick House then that is definitely up for question um, because if people are living on out-of-date food and living in reported squalor um, I really object to the chief executive running around in a Porsche and a Mercedes, and I'm sure you would too, by virtue of the fact that this is public money, and if you're a, a taxpayer of Bristol, it is your money that's going into Wick House. And therefore, you have the right to an answer as to how your money going to Wick House in the form of housing benefits is being used because this is money that you would otherwise be putting to uh, keeping a roof over your head, your family's head, uh, putting food on the table, uh, putting, uh, you're providing clothes for your children and their education. There's a whole lot of stuff there. And it's your money that's going towards Wick House. So the income to Wick House and Bristol Sheltered Accommodation uh, is pretty much uh, money from housing benefits. That's what keeps the place going and if it didn't receive that money from Bristol City Council then the, the place will be out of business. It's as simple as that, it would have to close. But there's a bit of a catch-22 situation in as much as Bristol City Council don't want to find 80 odd people back out on the streets of Bristol roaming around, that's not good. So against their better judgment I would say, Bristol Council are forced into a situation where they have to keep paying uh, housing benefit into Wick House. They don't have, I'm sure you know, if there was an alternative that they would absolutely go for it in fairness to Bristol City Council. But I don't believe that they actually want to be paying money into Wick House. Uh, and when it does go there, there's also a connection to the landlord or the person who actually owns Wick House, 
uh, who is, uh, well, it's a company really, it's an investment company called Goodar Investments, who uh, the company's uh, registration number and address is at 191 Wick Road, Brislington, which just happens to be the same address as Wick House. Now, Goodar Investments is, oh, the sole director of Goodar Investments is a gentleman by the name of Ro Roger Ronald Matthews, uh, who has a very nice address in the middle of France, uh, is an expat, obviously. Um, now, he resigned as secretary of Wick House uh, on the 29th of November 2015. Uh, he was appointed, as you can see, on the 6th of November 2008. His occupation is an accountant. So the man obviously knows a lot about money. Um, and according to the land registry, his company, in other words, him, still owns the property where the charity is based on Wick House and having the same address of 191 Wick Road. So the housing benefit itself goes into a, a considerable amount of money, actually. The income, which you see here, the, re the rental income, which is Bristol City Council, pays Wick House uh, in 2017, as you can see, £897,000, £779 uh, in housing benefit. In 2016, as you can see, it was less. Um, but the figure seems to be exactly the same. Uh, in fairness to the council, they did ask for a, they did ask the landlord for, or Rick House itself, the charity, for a rent reduction, and uh, that actually took place because the council didn't feel that they were getting value for their money. Um, but they're still, I mean, it's not shy of a million pound a year of your money that goes into Wick House. Now, from that, they they also have contributions of 141,161 uh, uh, resident contributions. So that's anything over the top of their housing benefits. So altogether, that's uh, just, a, in fact, just over a million pounds going into Wick House every single year. Now, if we take a look at the next slide, the rents that the charity is paying to the owner of the property amounts to not far short of five hundred thousand pounds a year. That yeah, four hundred forty-eight thousand eight hundred sixty-one. That's not far off ten thousand pounds a week. You know, it's somewhere between eight and nine thousand a week. I know for a fact that the BBC uh, got the property roughly valued at around about two million pounds. I'm no expert on property or property rental, but paying almost a half a million pound a year in rent on a property that's only worth around about two million, again, doesn't add up. As I say, that's, you know, somewhere between eight and 9,000 pound a week which we believe is still going to good our investments and uh, Ronald Matthews, then uh, Mr. Matthews, I suggest, is, is potentially on a very nice um, income indeed, or as Arthur Daly would say, a nice little earner. This demonstrates the, the extremes between poverty and wealth, between the people at the top the chief executive and obviously, uh, well, say not obviously, but perhaps uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, if he's still receiving this money. And it's just incongruent all the way through. It just doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense unless um, people could, again, I'm not suggesting that they are, um, but it could be open to accusations of uh, skimming money, uh, laundering money, that kind of very grey area. Now it's up, for, it's up to you to make your own minds as to what you think might be happening. But it would be, again, be very, very helpful for the trustees and the chief exec of Wick House to come forward and explain to us 
the taxpayers of Bristol how exactly these finances work because they appear to be a mystery um, and I'm sure as a contributor to Wickhouse through benefits you would like to know how your money is being spent so there you have it that's where we've got with Wickhouse so far there are lots and lots of anomalies within the practices there uh, a couple of which I've highlighted here which is how come the chief executive can run around uh, in nice expensive vehicles also looking at the amount of, of housing benefit which is coming in the fact that between sort of eight and ten thousand pounds is going out to the landlord every week now if I was trustee of a charity and I was asked to look through the accounts and sign them off and I saw that eight to ten thousand pound a week was going out in rent on a property worth around about two million pounds I would have serious questions to ask as to what was going on the Charity Commission have been trying to investigate the finances of Wick House for the last three years why it's taken three years I don't know perhaps somebody is on it part-time this could be a job share somebody could be on maternity leave uh, for three years um, because they're giving birth to an elephant or something I just don't know what's going on there and this is public money as I said this is your money that's going into Wick House in the form of housing benefit so why aren't these questions being asked and now you should be the one who is asking them because as I said in the video, this is your money. Thanks for watching.